So what have you got to do, Kate? Get the mallet out the, the back with a hammer and out, knock you out tonight out. so you can have a night's rest. Street is on Lutzer. Street is on Lutzer. Ah! Excuse me, Pajal stay. Pajal stay. No, no, right, okay. Pajal <laughs> stay. As a filmmaker from the Lake District, I'm always on the lookout for interesting stories, particularly in my region. So whilst I was filming a piece for local TV channel Cumbria TV about two 60-something ladies who were driving to China for charity, I stumbled across the Beijing Biddies. Now tell me uh, about, about this journey and where you're going to go from, where to, and why are you going to try and do it in this crazy uh, time scale of 30 days? Well, I, we can't really find anyone who's done this within that time, but it's, we're on a mission, and a mission to raise monies, and I think you have to do something big and powerful with the wire factor to make people sit up. Um, we're going to travel from Weatherby in Yorkshire to Beijing, which is approximately 8,500 miles. And we want to do it in the fastest possible time because we're not on a sightseeing tour. And uh, that's hence the challenge of 30 days. <laughs> Look at Chester. He's lying down. He's nice and quiet and calm and collected. Two very different characters. These stereotype busting ladies were about to head into the unknown and with no support vehicles on what is a 30 day cross continent driving challenge. The Biddy's vehicle was donated by RCI Financial, a 2008 Nissan Pathfinder. And a second vehicle was also secured by one of Edwina's contacts and friends, Yorkshire-based Redline Specialist Cars, a 2001 Toyota Land Cruiser that belonged to owner John Graham's partner. With the vehicle secured and donated, Cumbria TV were on board. The plan was to take a two-man crew that involved Gary Robinson and his friend Andy Gardner. The pair would follow the ladies and film their journey every step of the way. But as the biddies had chosen to go unsupported, the camera crew had a remit not to interfere with the trip unless absolutely necessary. The crew would have backup in the UK with Cumbria TV's Edward O'Keefe providing support. Additional sponsorship from local outdoor specialist Lion Outdoor meant that both parties were also kitted out for the journey. This was important as it was planned to take in the wilds of Siberia and Mongolia, as well as the endless unpredictable roads of Eastern Europe, Russia and China in what was to be a gruelling 30 day challenge. Just 
what is the amount associated Diesel in that car. No, you didn't no. boost it. No. no. You put benzene. Mm. No. Okay, it's, it's, it's all right. It's, it's... Oh, we, we, unfortunately, Kate had already just said I want to go home. That's <laughs> There's only one way home now, Kate. Yeah, it's just <laughs> get to, to get to Beijing. <laughs> Westmoreland, please, driver. Now then. I know we're going to China, guys, but I, mean, I don't even know where Westmoreland is. How are you feeling, mate? Good, man. This yeah. is we've, we've actually set off. Oh, no. With barely any miles on the clock, we arrive at Westmoreland you service station, yeah. and already all is not well within the biddy camp. Morning. Morning. Morning, everyone. Morning. So concerned looks, smells of burning. Yeah. It's like uh, sort of rubber burning, doesn't it? Yeah. Good morning. 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 How are we? <laughs> Marvellous. Smells a bit like a clutch problem, but. How are you feeling? Being the the man at the nerve centre. Uh, the, man, the man charged with... Nervous is the only <laughs> response, I suppose. <laughs> it's all right. Yeah, we were just holding it on the clutch. Must have done. Yeah, yeah, it just warmed the clutch up a little bit. So it's... I couldn't get a run out. I tried it on a couple of steep hills and stuff like that. It's all right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you look cold, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Away we go. Right. First. Point of convoy, then, really, isn't it? With true, the Biddy's yes. vehicle fixed, we head to Weatherby for a second send off from Kate's family, friends, and the team from the charities of Cancer Research and Macmillan. With the Biddy's having selected these two as the charities that they're raising money for, there was a full turnout to wave the ladies off. As it's Edwina's 69th birthday, there's a special treat in store. Macmillan patron Lady Halifax has invited the team to Garraby Hall before we all set off to Hull to get the overnight ferry to Rotterdam. Come and have a, come in and have a glass or a drink. Well, I said, I, I said I'm going. I ran yes. to everyone. I said I'm going to have a glass because it's my birthday today. Yes, no. Well, <laughs> But what, what, what about Kate? She's not allowed a glass too. Uh, yes, yeah, you are. Yeah, you are. <laughs> a very small, I have a very small one. Yeah. Shut up, dogs. Hello, how are you? Very well. Very nice to see you. Good my goodness. The great moments arrived. I don't think what's important is the fact that we're doing it at our stage in life. We're no, we're no good to nobody. We're <laughs> <laughs> seriously. You can't change the wheel. <laughs> we can do that, <laughs> <laughs> but not on a real car. <laughs> Where are we going today then, Kate? Uh, well, we're going to uh, Hanover, e E30 to Hanover, and then we're all the way along to just outside Berlin. But it's a worldwide car. I'm travelling for five weeks. <laughs> I didn't understand that. In England, they can bring seven days of the week because you can purchase seven days of the week. I don't understand. The Germans, <laughs> it's a problem with Germany. So we're going to go and get some fruit, are we? Yes. Yeah, That's a good, good idea. idea. Yeah. Can I help you? <laughs> Came far? Came to Beijing by any chance? <laughs> A friend of Edwina has taught English in Poland and one of her pupils, Cassia, and her husband, Bogdan, have offered the team accommodation and a traditional Polish meal.
Yeah, yeah. I'm not in general. Oh. That's it. <laughs> That's it. How are you? But after an excellent yeah. evening, the next morning starts a little awkwardly as uh, Edwina and Gary have a chat object. about logistics. Our objective is to go from A to B in a specific time frame. Yeah. And what's important to me as the project leader is that we have very strong, clear communications and that we are well coordinated. Because yeah. if we're not, one or other, of the, the two, two, two teams could have a challenge. Exactly. You're the project leader, we're following you. So wherever you go, okay. we aim to follow. Okay. But if we get separated, that's gonna be okay, right? Because you, you're gonna be filmed with the camera, the remote camera that we set up. Yeah. If we get separated, it's not that big a deal. Right. As long as we but, meet okay, at the end point. Right. You're witness that. If we get separated, it's not a big deal, okay? No, no, if, as long right. as we meet at Do, the end point. Can we move forward? Because I'd like to get going. I don't want to be late for my guests. Okay? No, that's absolutely fine. But right. Is that, uh, which, which is one is charged? The book charged. Right. So there's, there's yours and there's ours then. But she would bake them in the oven. Mm. Uh, quite a heavy tomatoes. So this is water. Yeah, we're nearly at our destination. Your camera crew awaits. Yeah, well there you go, you see. <laughs> this is the only posh bit of the trip. Hey, it's lovely. Yeah, I used to stay here. Beijing oh, Biddy's vehicle sponsors, RCI, have a headquarters lovely. in the Polish capital oh, and have provided some fine accommodation yeah. for the Biddies and two competition winners from within the firm. The competition winners raised money for the Biddies project and came to present the ladies with a cheque for their charity pot. <laughs> Meanwhile, the camera crew meet up with Cassie's brother and his family for another wonderful evening of Polish hospitality. I went to Kiosk, which is near the Turkey. Turkish Thank you for breakfast. That's very nice. It was lovely. Stop by on the way back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So I think we're best off to push on. From here to Canas, Canas to Moscow. Is that no, Canas to Lutz. Oh, so right. is the border. Oh, right. have to, and we have to leave four o'clock in the morning to get to the border to, to make sure that we get through. It can take hours. It's day five. And despite only having driven for four days, we reach Kaunas in Lithuania with 1,627 miles already on the clock. We gather together for a traditional Lithuanian meal and a walk around the town. It's been interesting hasn't it, seeing the, uh, the changes as we've gone along though, with yeah. the, uh, the countryside and the houses. And... <laughs> there can only be one administrator. Next day, it's another lengthy stint through to Latvia as we get ready to negotiate the tricky Russian border. It's important to keep moving. This is what my doctor said. Yeah. So you feel went... better? I do, yes. <laughs> she hasn't spoken for she has she's been driving and hasn't spoke for two hours. She wonder was getting bored. <laughs> Already tiring of motorway services, we decide to head off the beaten track for a meal with the locals. We could ask them really something local, something what what? Mm-hmm. No one knowing the local dialect for vegetarian food. Sign language always wins a day. <laughs> what language do they speak in? Are we, are, where are we anyway?
it's 4am. And only the hotel cat is awake as we set off for the Russian border. What time are we, what time is it now and why, why are we up it's, so early? It's actually eight minutes past four and we need to get to the border early. After five hours of waiting and a few issues with paperwork, we're finally in Russia. The only problem is that none of us know the correct term and symbol for diesel. Any long distance traveller will tell you that the biggest fear is putting the wrong fuel in the tank and potentially seizing the engine. But when you have a phrase book and a bolshe biddy to hand, anything is possible. This is something that we would find out more than once on this epic journey. Russia has an interesting road system with just one main road through the whole of the country, often just a single carriageway. Car after car sits alongside endless queues of lorries and juggernauts. And your life really is in your own hands as you try and negotiate past these. The largest city in Europe, Moscow has a growing population of 10.5 million. And with petrol a third of the price in the UK, it seems that everybody's on the road. As we head into the busy roads that lead to Moscow, our sat-nav begins to falter and the camera crew need to stay within a couple of car lengths of the biddies to make sure we don't get lost. But after a few hours on the road, we somehow reach our hotel unscathed. Well, I know you need the loo, but you made it. I made it, thank <laughs> God. I feel quite relieved, actually, Gary, to be honest. How are you feeling, Kate? Kate, you're in Moscow. I can't believe I'm in Moscow, Gary. I really just can't believe I'm in Moscow. I really can't. On the advice of Alex, one of Edwina's former business contacts in Russia, we've been told to stay for a few days in Moscow. Alex has been helping with the route, and we decide to stay in the Russian capital until after the huge military parade on May the 9th to mark the end of the Second World War. This gives us a couple of days to enjoy Moscow before the relentlessness of the 30-day challenge really starts to kick in. The Moscow Underground is a magnificent sight to behold, both architecturally extravagant and efficient. It's used by an average of 6.7 million people every day. Down here, you reckon? We're going down here now. Oh. I tell you, the driving will be a dog for a long day. With the huge parade going on above us, the biddies are keen to get out of the underground and join in the festivities. A feat that is easier said than done. Coming past here, or it's been. I think it's been. Did you enjoy the parade? Well, I think we missed it. Now we see all this seating behind us. Edwina, you. I would have thought a lady of your repute, with all your contacts. It depends how you decipher repute. Would have got us a seat on on at least the white row. Well, when I rang through, Vladimir was out that day. With an estimated 25 million people perish in the Second World War, no country sacrificed so many lives as it did here. 
and each year Russia marks May the 9th with a tradition of handing carnations to the old soldiers and placing them at the many sites of remembrance across the country. That it's three hours and 29 minutes from here to Suzdal. After leaving Moscow, a short trip to the spiritual centres in Suzdal sees the biddies venture north slightly. But the nature of this trip is to just keep going east for a very long time. The short trip to Susdal is followed by the longest part of the journey so far. And we head deeper and deeper into the real Russia and an overnight stay in the Tartizan capital, Kazan. Because we've gone a thousand kilometres today. It's alright, isn't it? I think it's fantastic. We're, we're covering this is the longest you've driven then, or longest that you've driven on the trip, yeah? I think so, a thousand kilometres. We've done, we've done 700, 800, but not a thousand. Makes you think, doesn't it? Slack in the other days. That yeah, was a proper well, stint. No, each hotel we've been to, and we've come a long way. Been two minutes, honestly, two minutes. So what's the delay? Oh. After a decent overnight stay by the riverside in the rather clean Tartizan capital, it's back onto the highway and the chance to sample some of that Russian motorway food. Okay, what's um, that's salmon? We don't know. We're trying, we're trying it. Turn left. We're really getting into this trip now, and another long day's drive brings us 320 miles east. A strange hotel with a nuclear power plant as our backdrop. And it's at this point that Kate reveals that she's beginning to struggle with homesickness. This is day 13 of the trip, it's sort of edging towards the halfway point. Mm -hmm. We'll put it in the context honest, about how you, Can you're I be feeling honest? about being yeah. away from yeah. home. Yeah. yeah, you must be, because you've got to start um, feeling... Slightly, it's slightly wobbly today. Um, I, think, I, I think it's a little bit of homesickness, actually. <laughs> Missing the family a bit. <laughs> pretty emotional, which is well a bit like me, but it's just that kind of you know lacking in communication. It's just really a little bit further away from home, <laughs> I suppose. Really. Anyway, I should be finally get going behind the wheel. <laughs> I'm going to put her behind the wheel now. She's going to drive the rest of the my journey. I've got banana. <laughs> well, I may have a banana because I've got to say the breakfast this morning wasn't exactly uh, yeah, biscuits stimulating. Biscuits and meringue. Okay, let's hopefully they'll bomb it off and they'll. Worries over an engine light that's been showing on the biddy's car since it was given an overhaul in Moscow means that they decide to spend most of the day in Ufa's Nissan dealership. The camera crew decides to drive to the next destination, up and over the Ural mountain range ahead of them. Oh yeah, they're announced now, aren't they? Yeah, when you're in England. Speak any English, as we arrive in the amusingly titled town of Mayas, we struggle to find the hotel. But by late afternoon, we're tucking into a traditional Russian meal, while the biddies have yet to set off. Yeah, well, near my ass. 
The hotel complex in Mayas is tricky to find, but in many ways is very typical of this part of Russia. It's an ex-Soviet block building in dire need of a revamp, but set against a stunning backdrop. Oh, he hopped on his bike and we followed him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Oh, it's orange, isn't it? Orange. <laughs> <laughs> My fresh orange this morning. Uh, yeah. So here we are in the Caribbean. <laughs> yeah, lovely. <laughs> Having a really relaxing time, you know, idling the days away. Aren't you glad we ditched that silly trip to China and we've come all the way to Lake Garda? <laughs> yes, yeah. Our next destination is Kurgan, and our stay in this large town in western Siberia is to be spread across two days. Kurgan is the one in the cave when, remember when we were chatting with Philip and John in Moscow? Yeah. Here we are. This is our glorious gaff. Up in the tower block. You need, high, you need higher chairs, I think, down there. This is a bit low. Zerbina's Russian contact, Alex, has organised a tour guide and an interpreter to take us on a series of activities. We even have our very own Kurgan based Mr. Fix It, Dimitri. Our tour takes us to Lenin's famous steam train. With historical sites seen, the visit to the cancer centre brings the whole trip into focus. And the true reason for the Beijing Biddy's 30 day challenge is there for all to see. Among uh, Russian women, the, the first place disease is uh, actually breast is cancer. Among the patients, there is great pride in the Russian health service. But the cues for treatment were tough to take in. Medical training very well. Very well. Medical. Medical. From what was turning out to be a busy day, Dmitry had also booked us some time with a team of 4x4 enthusiasts, some of whom had recently visited Mongolia. With valuable tips gained and abundance of finger pointing on the Mongolian map, it was time to leave. The day was to finish with dinner with a Russian family in their countryside retreat. Blind. Blind dog. In a surprise twist, it emerged that our host Valentina was celebrating her 63rd birthday. Your birthday! Birthday! Oh, Happy happy birthday. return! This is amazing. I miss this for As is tradition following a hearty meal with vodka, it was now time for everyone to sample the Russian banya in the couple's homemade sauna. We were all thankful that men and women partook the banya separately. With heat thankfully too extreme for the main cameras, we cannot show you much of this action. Although Edwina did manage a few shots by taking in a GoPro camera. This is all we were able to show without an 18 certificate. If ever, look at that! <laughs> hey, hey, ho! <laughs> We say goodbye to Dimitri at the car wash before heading to Ishim. I mean, 
on to getting robbed now, isn't it? Yeah, but they think that's a good, that's a much better pass than it. Wow! The biddies decide a short stop off at a small traditional Siberian village would be a good idea. The biddies have brought colouring books and pencils to hand to some of the children. Tiny little places like this, little farms, in the middle of this vast expanse of land. It says there's some parts of Western Siberia that, that um, you never see another traveller. This is my trip log, which I'm way behind. How are you getting on with yours, Kate? Oh, I'm way behind. I, I must catch up tonight. This is the true Russia. At our hotel in Isham, we're able to touch base with Edward at Cumbria TV headquarters on Skype. We've got about another five, six days, I think. Next day it was time for another long journey, deeper into southwest Siberia and Russia's seventh largest city, Omsk. They are, because I'm in Siberia. Despite putting on a brave face for the cameras, it's clear that Kate is still not fully enjoying the trip. So we make plans to catch up for a chat at the impressive Blue Kremlin outside of Om's centre. We're, no, we're going to Novosibirsk, it's about 400 and, 407, uh, 470 miles. 470 miles? Yeah. How far did we come yesterday? Came about uh, 200, 200, 227, I think, yesterday. So we're going to do more than double. It took us uh, yeah, six well, we, and a half hours, roughly, uh, including. This this was my concern. She's, she's great, but she's difficult to keep up with at times. <laughs> I'll say she's definitely she's difficult this, to keep up with. She's got this endless energy, <laughs> which I wish you could kind of inject some into me. I'm trying. I'm trying my utmost, Kate. I, mean, I really am. And, 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 and I think it's that. And he's me who's raring to go. And then Kate sees him oh, feeling not so good. And you think, come on. <laughs> This is the easy bit of the trip as well, isn't it? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> the next stop is Siberia's capital, Novosibirsk. Novosibirsk. North Castle. It's a spa. <laughs> and we know Beijing getting one is going in. <laughs> Pancakes are good. Um, I was um, before, so you, you didn't order any though, did you? No. Having on the journey... Over breakfast, Kate and Edwina decide to have a heart-to-heart. Heart. In my own mind, crikey, have I led Kate into something she's going to regret? Now, you see, am I really responsible for Kate now feeling as she is? But what I don't want to do is I don't want to walk on eggshells. I'm not mm. capable of walking on eggshells. And perhaps for the first time, Kate decides to get some things that have been bothering her off her chest. I upset you by a tone or a word I said. Well, I don't want to be in that position. It's not just me that picked that up. My daughter picked it up and said, uh, she said to me a couple of times, uh, Mummy, I don't like the way Edwina talks to you sometimes. I feel that she sort of, you know, you're, you're not like a, it's just, just the way she, you talk to me. And she, she actually stressed that to me a couple of times. I don't like the way Edwina talks to you sometimes. So it's not just me feeling feeling that sometimes that you, you, the way you speak to me. I feel... <laughs> right. Because she was concerned about that. What, on before the journey the or before? No, before the, tri before, the, before the trip. A couple of times when she'd overheard conversations between us on Skype. Right. Um, she said that a couple of times. Right. I take you on board, take it on board, but then I've said, but I'm not prepared to walk on eggshells, Kate. I'm, I'm, no. I won't put up with, with this, these trivialities because it's going to start to, to annoy me a lot. Mm. And I will then, that the, the tone will get more severe. Well, I'll say, just stop it, you know. Mm. So it, it's gonna, it, we, we've got to, to work these out together. 
and, and I, I think I've, I've ho hopefully I've hung on in there where there, t there are times where I thought I was really going to almost bottle out because but I kept going and, and kept myself kept myself try to keep, you know, keep myself strong. Where do you when you when you do get to that point? What is it that's got you through? Um, Edwina's constant faith in me, I think, really. Okay. Here we go again. <laughs> Use and useless. <laughs> I mean, she, she never uh, failed to have uh, you know, faith in me, really. <laughs> is it because you, you don't want to let Edwina down as well? Exactly, yeah, I've said that all along. I've said that to you, haven't I? I don't want to let you down in any way. Yeah, but... I, 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 thing was, and this I suppose, right, we talk about concerns, this, and this, I think that this is a very valuable discussion because I suppose at the end of this I don't want to feel that I dragged literally Katie into this, this journey. After the heart to heart, a wander around the Siberian capital is undertaken before the next stint of driving to Barnell in the Altai region. One of the reasons that Barnell has been selected as a stop-off point is so that the biddies can use the Nissan dealership to check out the car. This is important before we head into the mountains and on the road to the Mongolian border. This is essentially the last time that the biddies will be able to get any real help before they get to Beijing. into Mongolia so we, we need rubles at the border to change into Turgrix, Mongolian currency. Um. Most of the year the Gorno Altas region is covered in snow and this evening's accommodation is a ski lodge. You got the entire house? Yeah. What's the deal then? I don't know, but I'm going to... Where's the toilet? Kit seems a little happier at the moment, but whether it's to clear the air chat with Edwina or the vodka is anyone's guess. It's helping Kate relax. That's the key. Relax. <laughs> You've certainly... I mean, I got a half bottle about 10 days ago and I've still got oh, a little no, bit. Be, this will be finished tonight. Kate and I will finish it. I don't know. What? That's going to die. <laughs> well, I'm drunk it, you've drunk it. It's day 21, 17 of which have been spent on the road, leaving just 13 days to complete our challenge. We are now firmly in the Altai mountain region that seems to go on for hundreds and hundreds of miles. It's difficult not to stop at all of the interesting craft stalls along the route. Snowing down there hill down there. And there's even time for an impromptu snowball fight as we climb higher and higher into the Altais. <laughs> Now, and then, 
going to do it down. Our destination is Kosha Gash, a short distance from the Altai Mongolian border. And it also houses the last Russian hotel for some time. The Beijing biddies, how are the uh, how are the aches and pains holding up? 22 days in. Touch touch wood. There is excitement and trepidation amongst both teams as we head for the Mongolian border. I want to, to speak to someone to say that it's, it's closed and how do we get the stamp? This was stamped. And as we pass through customs reasonably sharpish, the contrast is felt almost immediately on the other side of the gates, as the asphalt on the road disappears. It's hard to explain exactly how the Mongolian roads feel. But if you imagine the inside of the car to be like the inside of a tumble dryer, and the driving experience to be similar to driving across cattle grids, then you'll get that drift. As we enter Ugly, there's a quick wrangle among some of the locals as to who gets our business. As it is, it's revealed there's a couple of beds in a Kazakh house. Nonetheless, the welcome is overwhelming, although the two younger boys are not quite as friendly as the adults. Take my shoes off, hang on. Yeah, you don't want to do that. You shake hands. There you go. We feel a little bit guilty as it seems that the daughters and the grandmother are being moved out of their beds to accommodate us. And all for the price of just five dollars each. Okay. It's so far, Andy. You're getting away with it. I am actually. Yeah, it's been fantastic. So you're happy? I'm always happy. This is milk tea. Ah, milky tea. Oh, Have you had some? Yes, well, this this was always my dream to, to meet Not... a Kazakh family. No, we didn't. It's good. No. We, made, we made progress. We did. We made very good progress. We won't make such good progress tomorrow. Right. Who knows? No, no, there's no asphalt at all. The biddies decide to sample some of the town's wares the next day. And we are given a guided tour by the family, including a visit to the local market. And we also see the family's grandmother, who's probably glad to get her Hello. bed back later on. There is nothing that can prepare you for the splendour and isolation of Mongolia. With the sat-nav long gone, the biddies are relying on their map reading skills to guide us through this tricky terrain. Pretty funky looking cows aren't they? It's rare that any western travellers come this way, other than the annual Mongol rally. Fancy living up here Gary, would like to live up here? Well, 
It's not much different to where you live, really, is it? Uh, just a few more houses. <laughs> the roads are slightly better. You're quite high up. It's a bit like Shap, isn't it? <laughs> yes, it's isn't it? But he's still falling. It's the end of day 23, with 19 days completed on the road. And despite having driven for most of the day, we find we've only completed around 120 miles. Tonight is the first night that we've camped in the wilds. The crew have got the tents up and the biddies up for the car. It really is a glorious evening. Right, Kate, listen. What? What's your... Oh, might have to have some more vodka. I don't know about anything else. <laughs> How about this then? Who now who would have thought we would be sitting or sat sitting oh. in Mongolia <laughs> at um <laughs> quarter to nine is it quarter to nine nearly quarter to nine, nearly quarter to nine <sighs> on our way to Holft having fried egg with some uh russian sausage onions and some beans cooking a veritable feast Day 24 is another beautiful day, but it doesn't start too well for Kate. Worried Kate's worried, Kate's worried that she's lost the part of her in-car GoPro camera mount, okay. and this sends her into a tailspin. Messed up every bloody thing on this bloody trip. Come on, Kate, don't start that again. Oh, oh dear. Things happen, these little accidents happen, Kate. Stupid thing to do. I was doing it in a hurry, and of course it, it never worked because we're trying, I was trying to do it in a hurry because we were, you know, to film the uh, us having fun here. And because, um, but it's not the end of the world. We are at the end of the world, but we're not at the end of the world, <laughs> Kate. Come I on. Think I've done this big. Okay, will you stop banging yourself around the ears? This is, it's just so necessary, you know. Did we need it yesterday? Oh, no, we, we, Did we, we answer my question, no, yes no, or no? no. Did we need it yesterday? No, we didn't. Right. We so will you, can, can you stop worrying? Yeah. Hey? Can we have breakfast now? Yeah. Good. Well, I was making the tea. <laughs> yeah, well, you get on making the tea. Today's plan is to get to Hoft and then make as much headway into the tricky high altitude part of the Mongolian steppe. The camera crew meet another European travel team. Herr Lehmann goes around guys. the world. Hi. How's it going? Very good. Where are you off to? Oh, yeah, I had to say him. Say hello. Hi, nice to nice meet you. To <laughs> nice to meet you. Good luck with your journey then. How many, how many kilometers? The full world? We drove the whole world. No, not really the whole world, but a lot of. And now we drove 70,000. Wow. Yeah, we started two years ago. Plus, minus. Oh, really? Yeah. How many are four of you? 
No, it's uh, two and two. Yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, we've just got the 30 days, you know. <laughs> And give us a wave. A quick That's stop great. Off. And we're on our way Thank again. Thank you. With hour after hour of bone shaking driving on land that seems to stretch out for an eternity. Just as we're seeming to make good time, the biddies have the first of three mishaps as they get a puncher. The next morning, after an overnight stay in the car, almost straight away the second mishap occurs, as the biddies pathfinder loses its front bumper and number plate. This is partially due to a high beam light that was attached to help the biddies in Mongolia that has fallen off during the drive. With a small town just a few miles away and a fuel stop necessary, it's hoped there's some respite on the way. We couldn't have been more wrong. Okay, Kay, what's happened? Well, I just wanted to check what she's put in the car. That, in that car. Yeah. Yeah. Diesel in, in that car. There's definitely diesel here, but the diesel is the orange pump. I, I, I heard you saying diesel to her as well. Diesel AT, and I pointed to the AT. That's on the, the third thing that's happened then. This is the third thing, you see. I said to you. <laughs> this is the signature, sir. Now I've got another challenge, you can imagine now what, what's going to happen now. What did she say? She went to go home. Mm -hmm. Had enough. Oh, wow. No, it's, those roads will break anybody. Oh, I don't think so. I think we came, okay, we should know and understand. No, not everyone's the roads like are bad. you. Not everyone is. With the wrong fuel in the tank, this seems to be the final straw for Kate. Does this mean that the trip is about to end? Kate has simply had enough and wants to go home. But the situation with the fuel is also dire. There's a danger of the engine season if the vehicle is driven. Phone, phone around, see who you can find and um, ask them what's the best way to quickly do that because that would be the answer. Somebody can come and quickly drain it. Yeah. First I think to drain I, it. While, you're, while you've got your contacts doing that, because we're here in the town, Andy and I then will, if you want to wait here and do that, we'll drive into the town, see if we can find the garage, try the language barrier, try and drag a guy back with us. There is space in the car for you if you want to come well, let, let, with why us. Don't, can we not, having gone to the trouble of trying to find him, he, he, he will be quicker and simpler, Gary, to... No, I'm saying this. To, for him I'll come to, back here, but to, we'll... You know, get, get somebody... Are you wanting us to wait here with no, you? No, 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 oh. but... but um, I think I'd rather the cake can go with you. No, 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 I'll stay no, here. No, 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 I'll stay here. I'll stay here. Should I bring you back an ice cream? <laughs> Got an ice cream? Yeah, I'll bring you back an ice cream. Bit, yeah, that would be nice. Kate will have one as well. See if we can find you an ice cream. <laughs> yeah, right. Kate, Kate will have something. I'll, go, I'll try and find a brownie in the car somewhere. I'll try and find an, I, an ice cream and a mechanic. <laughs> yeah, the thing is. I'm sure there was somebody around, but I just mm. think it'd be very hard to try and... Yeah, well, it will, it'd be, it, if you've got an English-speaking person yeah. uh, who, living in the land, is in the position he's in, is quicker, faster mm. to, to do it this way. Sometimes you just know that the gods are smiling on you. Literally just a few hundred metres away from the biddies, at the bottom of the hill, is a Mongol rally garage. Even better, it's open. Well, we're up at the garage by the temple, and our friend's car has got the wrong fuel.
fuel in it and the, the tank needs to be drained out. Is there somebody here? That, the, the car is up uh, at the garage by the temple. Temple. The temple. Part of the adventure, isn't it? I mean, what would we have to talk about, Kate? See, on a serious note, if we had to sail through, mm. how boring. Mm. Yeah, I'm not being funny. Mm. How boring. Mm. Oh, yeah, just around the corner. Have you a gentleman from the Mongol Rally garage down the bottom? going to drain your tank for you. Is it long there was an English speaking. Oh, Hi. Hi. How are you? Your name is? Edgar. Edgar. Okay. Yeah, we got a little bit of a problem. The girl caught petrol in by mistake. In less than a couple of hours, the vehicle is fully drained and topped up with diesel, and we're on our way again. How you feeling now, Kate? Okay? I will do. Thank you. Thank you. I sorted. The only thing I let you down on was the ice cream. I thought I'd better get this guy back first. It's all part of the adventure, but Kate still seems distressed. We find another small dusty town and the biddy sample a traditional Mongolian dish of fried meat dumplings. We continue to drive until it's near dark and it's the third night in a row now for the biddy sleeping in the car as it's decided it's too windy and the terrain is too hard for camping. We wonder how Kate's feeling today. Does she still want to go home? I think she's getting to a little bit the not being able to get hair washed and things. Isn't just it? both, I think. <laughs> but this is the first little sign of mm. saying that anything's difficult. Because yeah. every time you say anything's difficult, she says, "No, it's not. It's yeah. magnificent." <laughs> <laughs> Now you had a wobble yesterday and a half. Yeah. Um, I just to talk about that quickly. Um, you want to go home? Yes, I did. I still do. Do you still <laughs> want to go home? Out of grime. Sad. It just looks like you're more tanned.
We arrive in Bayan Congor and the locals help us find our hotel for the evening. Edwina is certainly happy as it's situated right next door to her hairdressers. I've just been to the hairdressers, Gary. Oh, heaven, heaven. Let me have a look at this hair. <laughs> it's heaven. Oh, this is clean. You think you've made it and then you look and it just goes on. on. And on. Is that but, the... But the, 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 the panorama is just unbelievable. Yeah, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's something we won't forget. The road from Bayan Congor to Arby Cahir is much easier, with more asphalt than stone. And we grow nearer and nearer to the capital, Ulaanbaatar. We meet a team of French journalists at our hotel who are travelling with a guide. Even they are surprised that we've managed to get this far with only the aid of a compass and a map. It's a remarkable testament to the Biddy's tenacity and endurance and the pair's map reading skills, clearly excellent. Well, we are uh, French journalists. We are based here in, in, in Oland Bator. We are working, we're working on a, a huge project here uh, on environmental issues. If you, if you like Mongolia, you'll be sure you're going to come back. And, uh, and uh, I mean, speaking just for myself, I, I've been living here and uh, um, with a family, so I, I, I wanted to also talk about uh, the country uh, as it is itself. And I, I wanted to tell stories, uh, other stories than gears, headers, horses. It, Mongolia, it's not only these three things. And, it's not uh, only cliche. Yes. It's more complicated than this. Like every it's day 28 of the trip, with 23 on the road, leaving less than 7 days and 1,700 miles ahead of us to complete our challenge in time. We are less than a week away from our destination, but given the incidents of the previous week, nobody is taking anything for granted. As we head towards Ulaanbaatar, we pass an interesting museum dedicated to horses which is apt given the number of wild horses that we've seen on our journey. This is the symbol of Mongolia. A few miles down the road, we encounter the harsh realities of the wild desert living, with an enormous flock of wild vultures descending on two lost foals that appear to have strayed from the pack. Oh, it's two horses. Oh, no. As we near the Mongolian capital, the roads strangely get more unpredictable. Ulaanbaatar is a real surprise, a sprawling metropolis in the middle of nowhere. A city that's clearly on the up, but with more than 750,000 people out of the city's 1.3 million population still living in yurts, or gares as they're known in Mongolia. This city is one of the most polluted in the world, particularly in the winter months. Look at that, somebody to greet you as you arrive in a big city like this. That was lovely, I enjoyed that. That's brilliant. Well done. <laughs> hey Kate, your map reading is absolutely top notch. We are met at the rather salubrious Chinggis Khan Hotel by Julian from the British Embassy. Well, since 1963 when it joined the UN, uh, so we're actually one of the longest friendships of, of all the Western countries. Uh, so we celebrated our 50th year last year. Ah, oh, but that was good. But we, we do everything at 
any Beijing or Moscow does. He's also booked a table for dinner for us all, courtesy of the embassy, at Ulaanbaatar's finest Indian restaurant. What a fantastic welcome. <laughs> Julian, you're a star. No, See you in the morning, mate. Yeah, Thanks a lot. Up. Cheers, mate. Bye-bye. <laughs> And don't step on any manhole covers again. <laughs> As we are slightly ahead of schedule, we are able to enjoy a spot of R&R. &R. Julian organises a trip of the British Embassy and a trip to a historic monastery. What are you driving? What car are you driving? This is this one, half my dog. Right. Eddie's holding, uh, holding up well. It, yes, so far, yes, it's not. It is done. Intense scrutiny. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. The biddies also request a meeting at the main Mongolian cancer centre. And just as it did in Kurgan, this really brings home the message of what this trip is all about. Remarkably, the Mongolian cancer centre appears to be even more advanced than the Russian one. The embassy are having a fundraising event for cancer charities on the Friday evening and a donation is being made to the Biddy's own fundraising total. Where's Julian? Where's Julian? That's Christopher Good to see you. Very well indeed, thank you. So how are the plans coming together? You're ready for the next leg? Fantastic. It's always blowing and it's hot and it's hot because I was born in Sri Lanka, so there is two to fix so. I agree. And that's where I was going to I never been there. You've been missing home care for, for a while. You are now stood on British soil. <laughs> How does that feel? <laughs> and we've got this terrible music in the background. It feels like home already, doesn't it? <laughs> well, we're off again. Here we go, on the road again. Headed for Genghis Khan and then... As we get ready to leave yeah. Ulaanbaatar, the rest and the fact that we are just five days away from Beijing has definitely perked Kate's spirits. It's day 31 of the trip, the 25th day on the road, and there's a slight detour on our way to Shane Hans, a small town in the Gobi Desert, as we visit the enormous silver statue of Chinggis Khan. Built in 2008, this 40 metre high statue is also a visitor centre and is now one of the main tourist attractions of Mongolia. Visitors can walk up to the head of Chinggis Khan's horse. and arrive outside via the warrior's groin area. As a man that's said to have genetically connected to more than 5 million people across the world following his exploits, this exit point is perhaps apt. Excitement.
Our plan was to find a yurt for the night near Shane Hands. But for once the biddy's directions are amiss, so it's a night in an interesting circular hotel in the town. The next day, we await to loud Pierre music early in the morning, and there's a festival of sorts, with hundreds of Mongolian families in attendance with their young children. After a wander around the parade, in the searing desert heat, we head towards the border town of Zamin Oud. On the way, we discover almost by chance the remarkable Kamar Monastery and the ancient religious site of North Shambhala. We even find a small yurt camp and decide to bed down for the night. After giving up our calls to our neighbours, we're invited to a Mongolian barbecue. Taking place inside our neighbour's yurt, a group of about six young Mongolian couples with their friends and their children are having a party. It's a remarkable sight to watch how the bags of recently slaughtered meat are prepared in a sort of milk churn that's filled with hot stones. I like the uh, I like the coals thing. After their party, the group leave in the middle of the night, and the next day, a trip to the monastery is just what the doctor ordered for the biddies. As we head out from the religious center, we're on our way again, and a 114 mile trip to Zamin Oud lies ahead. Around the world in the beast, you know. This border town is a little bit like the Wild West, and we find a pair of rooms and prepare for the Mongolian Chinese border at Ehrenhof the next day. Well, 
And I have to say, Kate and I are a brilliant team. Kate's a very, very good match with an excellent match with And I have a mouth <laughs> that goes and finds and yeah. wears people down, talks to people, keeps asking, asking, so you don't need Getting into Mongolia was a little easier than getting out. So much so that Gary's passport does not appear to have been stamped, despite five checks on the way, some ten days earlier. Gary is taken for questioning for some time as to why his passport doesn't have an entry stamp. And there's talk of us all having to carry our car items through the hand luggage area of customs. Thankfully we're given a reprise after Gary's iPhone saves the day with a picture of him at the border entry. It is, it is good to feel that home is nearing, isn't it? <laughs> Look at your spirits lifted right up. <laughs> Hey. At Erinhot there's still the matter of an overnight stay as the Chinese authorities need 24 hours to clear the vehicles. We are met by the biddy's guide for the next five days, Jimmy from Navo Tours. You're looking forward to being in the back of the car with the, we call them the biddies. Biddies? Yeah. Ah. The Beijing biddies. Where is it Jimmy? Look. Beijing biddies. Look at the hat. Here. Ah, oh, Beijing Bidis. So that's what Bidis mean. What does a Bidi mean? Yeah. A Bidi in English actually means an elderly, interfering person. The <laughs> <laughs> is that Kate and I are over 60 years of age. Yeah, I got it. Okay, yeah. so we call ourselves the biggest, the Beijing biggest. To drive in China, you must carry a Chinese driving license and have Chinese number plates. And technically, the biddies and the camera crew are provisional learners, with Jimmy being classed as a senior driver who has to sit with us at all times. It's day 35 of the trip, our 28th day driving, and as we leave Erinhot, we are thankful of what looks like the most glorious of roads on a brand new motorway. We had to shed any fuel we had in our jerry cans at the border and the decision not to refuel at Erinhot appears to have been what a foolish one. Not open ever or not open because uh, they're on a lunch break? Is, uh, it's not in business. Please go to the next uh, service area. And all this after making right. it across the whole of Mongolia through mountains and deserts. Are we really about to fall at the final hurdle on a brand new motorway? Uh, ask, ask Andy, how, how are you guys doing? 72 kilometres. Kate, absolutely pessimistic to say we won't make it. I'm saying we will. That's inevitable, isn't it? 72. Someone's being over optimistic, someone's being overtly pessimistic. Let's hope that we'll meet in the middle somewhere. <laughs> Well, well, why would it say? Why would it lie to us? It's not on reserve yet. I think it's you that, know. It's, it, this, this is blowing my mind that, that Mongolia, who you would think would have very few, in actual fact, had far more stations than, than we anticipated. We arrive in China on a, on a beautiful highway, and four out of four super duper service stations are. Um, Andy and Jimmy find a security guard at one of the empty garage sites and it turns out that the paperwork granting the licenses to sell fuel had been delayed. So the only way to get fuel is to turn back on ourselves. Are you going for it Kate? Are you going for it? One final hurdle is squeezing the vehicles through a low underpass, with the Biddy's vehicle in particular looking like it might get left behind. A few adjustments later and some careful manoeuvring and the Biddy's are through. It is! Yeah, keep, keep going. Yeah. 
<laughs> Thank God. Petal in sight. We're now able to head into one of the poorer parts of the Inner Mongolia region of China and we're able to refuel and head for Beijing. Hello there, friends. Now then, this could be one. So did they work and live, live here? here? Yeah, the same palace. He, he, here in this, in this uh, bed? Yeah, the same. We're all good on the left. How are you doing? Jolly good. Got enough diesel in. <laughs> Jerry can has not fallen off yet. After the stress of the day and a late 213 mile stint, we're all ready for a hearty meal. This is followed by some impromptu street dancing from the biddies in what turns out to be an enjoyable stop on at Ulanchat. It's day 36, our 29th day on the road, and Beijing is in our sights. Kate in particular has been near to jubilant across the last few days as a difficult personal journey nears its end. 200 kilometers? Yes. By way of contrast, Edwina is in a pensive mood. Mixed emotions, funny enough. Really mixed emotions. Mixed emotions because... This was 18 months of planning coming to an end. The terrific thing is that we've achieved it, or we're just about to achieve it. We've, I've got to get into Beijing Yeah, let's, yeah. let's okay. make sure we get into Beijing. Yeah. Despite the highs of completing the Mongolian trek and reaching her 30-day driving challenge, it's clear that Edwina has been bewitched by the road. This is a lady with the love of travel and the thrill of adventure. She just does not want it to end. A few more miles down the road, and as we arrive at the Biddy's Hotel in Beijing, it's hard to believe that we've actually made it. Come with dog. We made it. Ah, uh, Gary. Oh, cool. oh God. You made it to Beijing. So you finish your checking. How many times? Well, we've got to get our luggage in, and they've got to sort out. <laughs> Oi, give us a hug. Oh, you made it. it. <laughs> we actually made it to Beijing. Come on, Andy, give us a hug. Let's have a group hug. Yeah. On the freeway. Yeah. <laughs> Safe and sound. Team. What a trip. Fantastic. Now then, Billy. Hey, brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> The biddies thoroughly enjoy their stay in Beijing and meet up with Sri Lankan businessman Raj, who they met at the British Embassy party a few days earlier. What do you think of their story then? The fact that he's amazing. All right. Where are you going now? The ship the car. So I'm following you. I so you need to feel younger. Am I saying to myself, In a poignant goodbye, the trusty vehicles are driven to Changjin to be shipped back to the UK. You must be very proud then this moment. I feel a sense of, of, of well-being on, in having achieved an object of going. It's as simple as that.
On the last day of the trip, the team with tour guide Jimmy get together and take the train to visit the Great Wall. I wonder if she could turn it up a bit. Jimmy, can you ask her to turn it up a tiny bit? Yeah, we couldn't hear. Just couldn't hear that. Uh, Fantastic memories. I just loved every second. I, I, th I think when I say it's sad, it's coming to, come, coming to an end, is because I'd like to continue doing it because it's such fun. And, and it's, you know, going through different countries, meeting different peoples, understanding different cultures. That's been my life for so long. And um, so that's, that's the sadness, not, you know, it's coming to an end. There'll be more of this. Here we are. Mm. We stood here at the Great Wall of China. Mm -hmm. And you drove here. I know. Um, um, unbelievable. No, it makes me feel absolutely fantastic. I think uh, a tremendous achievement. And uh, I'm so delighted that uh, and everything's gone. We've been very incre incredibly lucky and everything's gone so well. We've all gone well together and it's been brilliant. No, fantastic trip. Wouldn't have missed it for anything. As the magnitude of the 5,500 mile wonder of the world stretches out ahead of them, the biddies take a moment to fully reflect on their achievement. More than 7,000 miles driven across continents, through potential war zones, over mountains, across deserts, and armed with just a map and a compass through some of Mongolia's bleakest outposts. They battled mechanical and personal difficulties and have come out stronger for the journey. And all in under 30 days of driving, championing the cause of cancer research in Macmillan and raising money for both charities along the way. Proving that age is just a number, and if you put your mind to it, anything is possible. This is their legacy. This is the Beijing Biddies. Super, super lady. I couldn't have had a better teammate. <laughs> really. Well, you've been amazing with all your uh, your um, escapades with the locals. <laughs> I love it. So I, just, I just love it. <laughs> I just love it. It's fun. But but no, I know you've had challenges, Kate. But but yeah. but you've got your own inner strength and determination. I just think it's amazing what we, we've done yeah. and we've achieved it. You know. Achieved we, it. And you, I, I said, and I'll say it now, as we just, before we get to the very bottom, I think there's more merit in what you've done than those in me. I'm a little bit blase, but you, you've, you've fought yourself, you've fought the situation, and you've done it. And I think there's more merit in that. Marvellous.